Hi, and welcome back. So today we're going to look at how we, with PHP, can mitigate away from cross-site scripting and be secure on our web page. So what we see here is a um, small web page that I created. It's very, very small. And the only thing we see is a small formula and we can type something in, uh, something. And the data is basically being reflected back to the web page. This is sent with a HTML formula as a post request. So let me just show the code really quick. So the code is as for the following. This is a form, HTML form, and the action is sending all the data to the index file, which is the file I'm looking in right now. And the method is post. A small input field with text with the name of value and a submit button, and that's about it. In the bottom, I reflect all the data coming from that HTML formula back to the client, the browser, and just posting it raw. In the top, I have another thing that I'm going to talk about in just a bit. So let's stick to the two things here, the form and this code down below. So let me just tell you what this can do. If you do, did this in this particular way, you are vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Cross-site scripting is, is um, the case where tags are being passed and rendered by the browser and will be executed as raw code. A really innocent way to test this is just to put in an H1 starting tag, for example, the end doesn't really matter, and just send the data and the, the text come out as a H1 uh, size text. This basically means that this site here is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So I could type in any sort of thing like a script tag and the end script tag again, and do, let's say, an alert with uh, this should not happen and press the button and an alert will pop up on my screen saying this should not happen. Executing raw code in the browser from the user input is what cross-site scripting is all about. The different forms of cross-site scripting, this is called the reflected type of cross-site scripting, which I just demonstrated. The other type I'm going to demonstrate is a very small and um, reflective idea of having a stored persistent cross-site scripting. Looking back at the code again, we will see that I require a file called data.php. Now, let's just think that this file connects to database and uh, populate a variable called data, and that variable I can echo back to the screen. If I do that, without knowing what the data, uh, what data there is inside the variable, there is a my chance, there's a slight chance that I might have some vulnerability again. I'm just going to update the page. And I get a pop-up saying this should not pop up. Just to be sure, I'm going to write in the h1 tag again, so it's not some old cache laying around in the browser being executed from the, the reflected part. I'm going to send the data again. I still get the pop-up, and I get the new inserted value as h1 tag reflected back to the website. Let's have a look at what the data variable contains. So the file data.php can be seen right up here. It's a very simple file with just a variable. What I put in is a script tag with alert, this should not pop up. So think about it. This could be some data coming from a database or some other place. It doesn't really matter. The way we look at this from this uh, page called index.php is an external file that I require. External meaning it's could it could come from any place. At the moment, it is located on the local disk on my computer. So how to fix this? How to fix cross-site scripting? How to fix tags not being executed by the browser? In PHP, that is quite simple. Let me just show you how to do. Basically, what you do is you encapsulate whatever thing you have in a function called HTML entities. I'm going to do it around the, the data variable. I'm also going to do it down here at the value from the post. I'm saving the file, going back to the browser, updating again, and this time we get no pop-up. We will get this text outputted to the screen, and the same goes below. So what happened really? How can it be that, that I can see the, the actual special characters without having this executed by the browser? Let's right-click and see View Page Source. What I see here is something called HTML Entities. 
the ampersand, the LT, and the semicolon is uh, is uh, short for lower than, and the ampersand GT and the semicolon is short for greater than. So within those two tags, we have script, an entity in a browser. It's basically just a short for some special character saying, this is a special character, please show the special character. Do not make it as a special character that should be executed by a browser. It's just a visual representation of the original character, the special character, lower than and greater than. Further, we can see that even quotes, quad, is an entity, and there again. So the quotes is is these. It's a quote. HTMLTs is the easy way to go to wrap your code around. Every time you have some output, no matter no matter where it is from, if you're going to echo it out to the to the browser, to the client, to view on to the view, or just to view with your eyes, always remember to wrap it in HTMLTs to remove the threats from cross scripting. Okay, so I hope you like this small video about cross scripting and how to mitigate against it. Please subscribe, like, and click the bell to get future notifications from my videos. I have a full course in Python and various other things about the OWASP top 10. Always look at my videos, subscribe, like, and click that bell. I see you again, bye.